Hello, my name is James Clem. Chapter five is about materials. It's about getting our parameters down and milling our restoration. So that's the three components of this chapter that we're gonna address with. Materials will continue to evolve. The main material I use to date would be Emax. That's my go-to restoration. I do like Enamic. I'm getting more acquainted with it. I wanna see more studies. Enamic is the best milling material I've ever placed. I use it primarily for inlays and onlays. Emax has really been nice. I, I, I sleep better at night with, with Emax, and I think a lot of offices and doctors around the world sleep better. We have other strong, robust materials coming by Vita and Dent Supply, so we will update those in this chapter as they become available. The, uh, the milling process is a reflection of the quality of our preps, and that's in some prior chapters. You need to get your parameters down. The parameters that we discuss in this chapter are a place to start. Now, parameters are more of a way to fine tune your machine. Now, machines vary somewhat, particularly milling units vary somewhat. If you're a blue cam user, make sure that you calibrate your camera at least once a week. That can make a difference on your mills. If you're not getting consistent mill outcome using the same parameters, with your blue cam, you need to calibrate your camera. We still don't know where Omnicam is with calibration. However, in my own experience, I have found that by calibrating my camera more than once, it did make a difference in how my restorations fit. If all of a sudden things aren't dropping the way they used to, we need to look at that. Also calibrate your MCXL. Once those are consistent and they're behaving properly, then our parameters kick in and make it consistent for us. As new parameters or shifts take within the software, we will update this chapter as far as that goes and also on material selections. Um, as far as shading goes, uh, this chapter deals with making your own custom shade guide. Uh, we do sell a custom shade guide on our site. It's of the materials that we use using the natural dye, which reflects the color of the preparation. That's how I color match. I'm a very simple man. If I can see it, I can design it and I can make it work and fit really well. With all ceramic dentistry, unless we're covering up a redwood trunk color, we use the color of the preparation shine through. That's one reason why I like the stronger ceramics. With softer margins like a chamfer or a feather, I can rely on the color of the stump to shine through, which means I don't have to use a lot of stain. I can blend in a cervical zone. Having that understanding, I'm going to share a really simple way to shade match or value match. Think of it more as brilliant matching. Brilliant matching is matching the brilliance of the incisal or the cusp one half. Posterior teeth on the cusp tip is the cusp tip one half or the incisal one half. And then we blend in the cervical with either optical shine through of the color of the preparation or external stain or modifying it with the color of cement we use. It's good to know that. It makes a difference in how we finish our restorations and uh, that's really really important that we get things right. Also understanding how to mill in a sense of where if a restoration is more brittle, like Emacs is fairly brittle, when it's in the intermediate phase when we mill it. We need to bulk the margins. We need to add a certain marginal thickness to make sure we don't get that serrated saw little look and then we cut it back afterwards using the Meisinger Clem Lab Kit. It's called JKO3. I get no money from the lab kit, but I designed it because it's what I use. I wanna pass it on so it works effectively for you in your hands. There's a lot more I could say right now, but the video is getting a little long. So we'll keep adding to this site and there's a lot of good information as you scroll down and learn more about materials, how we color match, and also the parameters. Thanks for watching.